Hi folks, we've got a machine, a pretty cool little pattern into uh, two of these discs. They're each about two and a half inches or 65 millimeters. This job screams 440. It's also, I think, an awesome example of how easy it is to get really good tool pass in Fusion 360. We've got a set of soft jaws made up, parts in there. Let's run the machining first, and then at the end, we'll take a look at just how easy this Fusion 360 code was to make. Welcome to another Wednesday widget, folks. So on a job like this, you know, this tool path may take a hair longer. I thought about doing it with more of a quarter inch at first and trying to reduce the cycle time, but normally if I weren't filming this, I would I would set it and forget it because the adaptive tool path is just so awesome that I don't have to worry about it. Um, so it takes a little bit longer, but again, who cares? And Path Pilot uh, on the 440 here really does a tremendous job of handling the uh, adaptive tool pass out of Fusion 360. And I think that's something people take for granted. I was talking to a guy uh, on the phone last week who, you know, look, he's outgrown his toolbox. He needs a machine bigger than an 1100. But he's looking at e even 10-year-old, let alone 20-year-old vertical machining centers, which are awesome machines, you know, 100 grand or more brand new. Um, and the controllers stink. You know, not only the memory problems like we were talking about in the robo drill video, but you, you, you know, the controller can't handle the speed. It's a pain in the ass to work and use, but literally it can't handle the code. Um, that doesn't have the memory of the horsepower like Path Pilot does. So, interesting thing to think about.
awesome. Clean her off, take a closer look. Folks, this is awesome. This is why I love what I get to do. The quality here is just, I mean, this is an awesome recipe. Tormach 440, Fusion 360 tool paths, Lakeshore Carbide tools, freaking love it. Awesome part quality. What's really cool is I could be wrong, but I believe this job is a younger customer. So we've got, you know, folks out there that don't necessarily have years of experience that are helping you know, making parts or getting parts made, have access to this equipment, just awesome. So good Fusion 360 tips here. So we started off with the shear hog, with an adaptive strategy, just using that as a more efficient tool to get the, the uh, top level of material removed. You'll notice under our shear hog settings, we have three thou radial, so that's along the side walls here, and then we have a thousandth axial, so we're actually leaving a thousandth on top of, say, this face right here. So the shear hog doesn't do a perfect job cleaning up floors. That's why you notice uh, right here we did a horizontal. I probably didn't have to do this in the end, but it only took two minutes and 30 seconds, and it's just, it, the part does look great, so I like it. The majority of the work was this adaptive strategy right here, and uh, really there's not much to it. We picked this outside ring right here. Ooh, did Fusion just crash on me? It didn't crash. It opened up a duplicate application somehow. It's kind of weird. Rest machining. Actually, don't even think I needed that here. And then here's our rest, our passes recipe. Literally, it does all the hard work. And what I love about it is I've got that confidence in this toolpath, um, especially after I watched it do the red uh, helical interpolated plunge. That was the probably riskiest part. We're doing a full depth of cut here. And again, I walk away from the machine because it's not going to load up that tool. You saw we had great chip evacuation. Uh, where that takes us is to here. We had the center area of material left, and that I was concerned about. Uh, I thought about doing it with a 1 8 inch end mill, but I looked, took a closer look. And using a 2D contour, uh, the 3 16 fit, you can even see it. It's, uh, obeying the solid model here which is really cool and then we did a final cleanup um, on everything where we go all the way around the perimeter and around every individual uh, uh, whatever you call these things you know risers and I'm getting an error here about lead-ins which it was dropped so I took a real close simulation look to make sure there wasn't a problem that's a really good lesson which is when you're running your simulation I'll fast forward. Oh, I've got a graphics error going on here. When we simulate all the way to the end here, which we do by clicking the go to end of toolpath, we see our final part. Make sure you toggle off this light bulb up here in the top left. That's your solid model. And what can happen is, let's say for some reason we had a bad toolpath and it was machining away this whole piece right here. Well, you wouldn't see it in the sim because the solid model would be sort of backfilling or backstopping that simulation. So you want to toggle that off and take a real good look, especially if you're ever getting an error. I usually try to, to get rid of those errors, uh, but this in this situation I ran it. Last tip I wanted to mention was when we did our final 2D contour cleanup on all of our posts and around the periphery, under Edit Passes, I left 5 tenths axial stock to leave. That meant that our end mill was actually not machining at full depth on this floor, but rather staying one half of one thousandth of an inch above it, which is about one eighth the thickness of a sheet of printer paper. Um, you know, an immeasurable distance for any of us. 
And what that does is it just helps avoid any tool marks along the bottom floor and it actually reduces deflection on your tool by having the tool, in this case, only cut on the side of the tool and not on the bottom of the tool. You also see the great thing about this part, I did it all with the same tool. Uh, and no, that's not because we don't have a tool changer yet on the 440, although that is coming out. It's because no matter how good you are, you never measure tool heights perfect. So by having one tool, even if it's off, you know, three tenths of an inch or three tenths of a thousand, it's all off evenly and it makes a much nicer looking part. I almost forgot the most amazing thing. This is a good recipe. I like this. I actually have to do a, a similar part that's not quite identical templates, choose all my operations, right click, store as template. I'm going to call this small end mill. Now, in the other part, or like I can just save this for general use when we do a new setup, click OK. So I've got a brand new setup here. It's, it's the same thing as a new part. Right click, create from template, small end mill. It applies every single operation including all of our parameters, our heights, our step overs. You've got to go in and pick a few boundaries, or for instance, if you were doing this with holes, you'd have to pick the holes or drill tap type stuff, but huge time saver and a huge confidence builder. We did a whole video on templates. You can click here if you want to see more on that, but just another reason I love using this software.